Toastmasters, women, family, love, relationships. That's my topic. Share on my timeline, go live. So I've just set it up. I'm live streaming. Hi. I am doing a spontaneous live and I don't see the topics that I've just written down that I want to share about. It's about Toastmasters, about women, about communication, about marriage, about family. On Sunday, Joseph gave a sermon and afterwards a participant asked, what does the wife say? What does the wife say? And wanted to hear my take on what he had said and the particular issue that he addressed at that time was in response to a question somebody asked wouldn't it be better if people are more similar in a marriage relationship then there's less likelihood of conflict in the relationship joseph pointed out how different we are how we've been matched by reverend moon and are totally different and how the relationship can work despite the opposites, how we invest in one another. So my response in that take was we have common values. We connect on our values and we've made a commitment. So we've made a commitment in our relationship to one another and to the marriage, okay? We believe that there is a universal source, a universal love. We believe in God, our heavenly parent, who wants to express his, her parental love through both of us, through each one of us, his father, mother, God, right? So that commitment is what drives us daily, even when we are totally different, coming from totally opposite ends of the earth in our attitudes, in our experiences, in our relationships, in whatever we do. I'm driven now to do this live because I've just come from a Toastmasters executive meeting. Now, the issue with my Toastmasters club, because we're at the United Nations, many of the club members don't want to have a public profile. Some do. Now, if you work at the UN, you may be familiar with social media, especially if you've only started working at the UN in the last few years. I started working for the International Atomic Energy Agency in 2009, and it was, I think, about 10 years before that I started, or even longer, that I was doing NGO activities also at the United Nations. And of course, our goal there as an NGO was to have a public image. However, before I got the job at the UN, I was working for Mayors for Peace. and an expression that came up was cities are not targets, people are not targets. And then I had a, a tour of the CTBTO. And on the fifth floor of the CTBTO is where they have their behind the glass doors, their monitoring program. And on the roof of the building is, uh, is, is the equipment where they can monitor and tell where there's an earthquake or if there is a nuclear explosion somewhere. So the whole issue of targets has, has stuck with me in a particular way. So I can understand that a lot of my colleagues who work at the United Nations don't want to be visible, don't want to show who they are. They don't want to become a target, right? So when I think about my communication club and the goal of Toastmasters and the VIC Toastmasters Club, our whole mission is to promote communication, to help people to express themselves more clearly. And I have to admit, I took quite a passive role during that meeting. I opened up and started speaking towards the end. I'm a retiree. I retired three years ago. And we just heard in today's executive meeting that the club executive 
needs to have to fulfill the regulations of the um, VIC Recreational Club, the on-site administration of the clubs at the United Nations in Vienna, that the three top members of the club have to be current staff members, the president, the secretary and the treasurer. I believe it used to be just the president had to be a current staff member because we had other people coming in specifically for club activities in the past. And I'm an active executive member, not one of the seven key members, but I support the club in other ways. I have the same issue with Women's Federation. There are so many areas where we need to learn how to communicate with one another and also the generational contract. This is an expression I was not familiar with in English, but I've heard this expression so much here in Austria. The generational contract. Last week when I attended the meeting with the Minister of Labour and Economy, she talked about in her own family how her father had a hotel and failed in his generational contract in after 25 years did not hand over the leadership of the company to herself and her brother so they left they left home and set up their own business and did not work in the family business anymore it was this consciousness of of the need of the cooperation between the generations. Fascinating concept. I had, I had not really paid much attention to this concept in the past. And hearing it in this way was quite new to me. And here in Austria, the terminology is often used in terms of funding pensions. Now, as the world population, you know, on the 1st or the 2nd of October, we had the International Day of Older Persons. And it is becoming more and more obvious that the majority of the world's population, there are more people over 65 than under 65. So that has demographic consequences. And the issue that has been addressed for years here in Austria is whether the younger generation will be able to finance the pensions of all of these old people when there are so few, so many, so less younger people than the, the heavy pyramid at the top of the number of old people who are demanding or deserving or requiring a pension which is being funded through the income, through the economy produced by the younger working class, which is a diminishing population demographically. These are the, these are issues that, that affect me. Okay, my time has gone over. I wanted to talk about communication and how important it is to also have the cross generational communication. So just as a past executive member in the Toastmasters Club, I saw all the issues coming up, the things that I had solved. I set up a Google Drive, I bought a camera, I, I set all these things up, but then I left. And if nobody's taking care of my legacy, that's the, that's the thing. If that legacy has not been bequeathed effectively, and it can't be taken care of. This is I'm having my my realization here now because the issue is this bequeathing. You know, I'm feeling like they don't care about what I did. I set up a Google Drive. We could be using that. I'm using the Google Drive for the Women's Federation to share our documents, and I can give access to people even without, I believe, without a Gmail account, to the documents that we have in our Google Drive. And I believe we could do the same in Toastmasters. 
And what I'm realizing is how important it is to communicate. And that's within our executive committee, within our members, within our family as a couple, but also to bequeath our knowledge. And surely I can only tell you what I've learned and what I've invested and what I've achieved if you're prepared to listen. So my offer, ask me. I'm very happy to tell you I'm a public speaker. I'm a communications trainer. I'm a consultant, a mentor, a motivator. So I appeal to you to fulfill your part of the contract, receive what is being offered and ask for what you need. And I'm recognizing it's time for me to bequeath, to give more, to show more of what has already been accomplished, what we can build on. Otherwise, history is just going round and round in a circle. And we're starting from scratch every single time. And that gets frustrating. And that's why at the beginning of the meeting, I was fairly passive because even though I had logged in 10 minutes before the meeting and my the window on my computer said, we will let you know when the meeting starts, I didn't get any notification. I didn't get into the meeting. And when I clicked onto the link again, another window opened and I joined in and they were on point five of the agenda. So I guess I missed the first five to 10 minutes of the meeting. I noticed they weren't recording. They realized at the end and I was holding back. I wasn't doing my bit because I thought, well, who cares? They don't need me, they don't want me. They're not interested in what I've got to say. So I'm looking also for that, I'm fishing for that appreciation, that approval that confirmation, that affirmation, yes, we need you and we are interested and we want to learn from you. Otherwise, I think, well, okay, what the, what's the point? Why should I bother if you're not interested in listening to anything I've got to say anyhow? All about growing up, communicating, learning, sharing and staying in the loop. It's the give and take, give and receive action that's so important. And no matter how different we are, it's possible to make the link, to connect both ways when we have the desire and the commitment. And that can come when we have a higher purpose beyond my comfort zone. It's for a higher purpose. My higher purpose throughout my life when I've been thinking about all of the different areas that I've been working in, Professors World Peace Academy, Women's Federation for World Peace, Family Federation for World Peace, Universal Peace Federation, Toastmasters, International Atomic Energy Agency, Nuclear Security. They're all areas where I want to make the world a better place for you and for me. Thinking of Jody, namaste. Have a great day.